Hello, and welcome to episode 15 of Sports Betting Conversations. The title of today's episode is Better Takes, Improving Better Performance with Personal Algorithms. Today we are joined by Steve Rubenfauer, CEO at Better Takes, and as always, Kevin Twitchell. Well, Steve, thank you for joining us today. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what Better Takes is uh, all about. Okay, well, I am um, a lifelong entrepreneur. I've never really had a real job. I've always just started on my own companies from scratch. I grew up in Detroit and um, I uh, just have some, you know, my background is very diverse. I've had uh, one of the companies I ran was the uh, largest seller of collectible stamps on the internet in the history of the world, actually. Um, I've had uh, another company that sold art online. I've just had a bunch of different companies. I've always been an entrepreneur. And a few years ago, when betting became legal, I started betting college basketball. And I uh, wanted to take a look at how I was doing. I wanted to see, you know, where I was uh, making money, where I was losing. And so I went online searching for a tool that would help me understand my own betting. And I couldn't find it. There was nothing out there at all that could tell me how I did. And I just kind of got the idea, like maybe, um, you know, I was living in San Francisco, living in the tech hub of the world. So had a lot of developers as friends. I said, hey, you know, is this something that would be too art? Can we build something that will let people analyze their own betting performance and see, find their strengths and weaknesses? And I just started the company from scratch. And so I have a couple of friends that have uh, big names in the sports business, sports industry. And uh, they've been around a long time and I ran it by them. And they were really excited and they wanted to get involved. Uh, one of my uh, good friends is a CTO of a company. And I said, hey, do you want to be our CTO? And he said, sure. And it just kind of grew and grew. It just kind of grew from this little idea I had. And uh, it's taken a couple of years and we finally are live. We just uh, have our app in the App Store and Apple for the first time last week. And we are ready to go. And what the app does, what our, what our mission is, is to help you understand as a sports better your strengths and weaknesses and show you your patterns and your biases and things you might know about not might not know about yourself or might not be might be a little hidden and as you know if you've been not uh, looking at uh you know different informational sites for the past few years there's a ton of information out there there's a lot of data and it's all trends and strategies and it's about the players and teams but there's nothing out there that really looks inside of you to figure out what your particular strengths and weaknesses are. And as all that information is ubiquitous and played out, it really is going to be the only way to gain an advantage is to look at your own performance, your own history, and make a you know better informed betting decisions. So we built this tool. Now we have a very exciting roadmap with a lot of features. Right now we just kind of have our basic product. And the way it works is before you place a bet, you check with our app and you, um, so every day you open up the app and you type in the bets you want to make, your predictions for the day. I bet college basketball, so today I put in the college basketball bets I want to make today. High Point, Appalachian State, very exciting teams. And <laughs> looks through, when you, when you tell, when you tell the program predictions, our algorithm goes through your, our, goes through your past betting history and it finds similar situations. There's a lot of different variables there. Things like betting on home teams, betting on underdogs, different situations, like if it's a good team, a bad team, if they're coming off a win, a loss. There's a whole bunch of variables that we take a look at. And we distill a whole bunch of them. We weigh them in certain ways, and we distill a whole bunch of them into one number that we call your edge score. And your edge score is kind of a representation. It's a numerical representation of your expertise or your proficiency in the particular bet that you're making. So every bet you make is going to have its own unique edge score. An edge score of 50 means that you have no advantage. It's basically, um, if we were giving edge scores for coin tosses, they would all converge around 50. So 50 means it's something that you have no advantage or disadvantage. Over 50 means it's something that you have some expertise in or some competency in. Under 50, not so much. And um, the numbers uh, the numbers don't really relate to win percentages too much. Edge scores of 54 or 55 are pretty good. 
And when you start getting in the high 50s and low 60s, it's something that you have a lot of expertise in and you should bet. So for instance, I, I put in a couple bets today already. I put in two bets. One of them I have an edge score of 52. One of them I have an edge score of 58. And it basically is just another piece of information. You know, you're distilling a lot of information on your own before you pull the trigger and make a bet. And it's just one more piece of data. And that data is how you do in this particular bet. So there's nothing outside. There's no, we don't have an opinion on the game. We don't have an opinion on the team. There's no outside data. We're not looking at trends or how, you know, we're not looking at anything except how you do in the past in these similar situations. And you can use this information any way you want. You can decide to bet less, bet more, hold off betting. It's just another data point for you. And what we're trying to do here is find little areas that you don't really know that you're not great at. And the theory behind this is that, you know, in life, that, you know, more and more we find out, you know, our subconscious, our unconscious, there are psychological factors that really rule a lot of our decisions. So we like to think that we're in charge of things and our conscious mind, our ego controls things. But, you know, really that's not the case a lot of times. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes that control our decision-making processes. And there's no reason that betting decisions are any different. So we're sometimes making betting decisions based on things. For example, like I said, I've only started companies from scratch. And when I bet, it's, it's no, you know, it's not surprising that I almost always bet underdogs because that's who I associate. You know, I'm always the underdog. I'm always the little guy trying to make it. I don't want to bet on Duke. I don't want to bet on Carolina. I don't want to see those guys win. You know, I would bet on Boston College and Vanderbilt. So it's no surprising that I almost always bet on underdogs. And what was shocking to me when I looked at the data was how good I am betting at favorites. And I don't bet on that often, but when I do, I guess because it takes so much more for me to pull the trigger. I don't want to bet on those. I don't want to bet on Gonzaga. But when I do bet on favorites, they do really, really well. And so that showed me that there was a lot of psychological things that were interfering with my decision-making process. And I wasn't able to look at games clearly because I have this predilection to not like favorites because, you know, I'm always the underdog myself. I'm always the scrappy little guy. And so that's who I root for. So there's a million little things going on in all of us. And the program really tries to uncover those things, bring them to light so you can make a more informed decision. It's like psychoanalysis for betters, except it's a lot cheaper because it's free. And it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's great because I, I concur that sometimes you bet with a more emotion or what you think is intuition, right? Um, instead of just looking at the hard numbers, just like the sports books do when they set the lines, right? I mean, they're not doing it by gut. <laughs> they're doing it based on, you know, whatever data they have. But I mean, the, the, the app sounds are truly amazing. I mean, I've, it just, I haven't come across anything like that on the market and just, you know, I was thinking about how much, well, you were talking about how much data all the sports books where I place bets have on me. And the best that I can do with it is just look at my list of transactions and that's it. I mean, I can tell you today, you know, if I've won more bets on one sport versus the other or underdogs versus favorites or spread versus money line, then I mean, uh, if I did have access to that information, again, as you said, that would make more informed decisions um, when placing my bets. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really, really uh, interesting. Um, so, uh, yeah, obviously there's a lot of, you know, technology, you know, be behind uh, what you know, you're pulling together. You, you mentioned an algorithm. Do you do anything around um, AI or machine learning? We need to. We just, you know, we're a baby company. We've been self-funded, and that's the next thing we really need. If anyone has a million dollars out there they want to give us, we need to add. You should be. <laughs> because our program would be perfect for machine learning because yeah. and it would really learn which variables are more important. You know, that you, you know, basically, if somebody has an edge score of 55, we want to know going forward, what does that mean? What percent do they really win? And AI and machine learning would really add a lot of those things. So that's that's our next incarnation is adding AI and machine learning. We actually have, we have a data scientist that built the algo and uh, it's very, it's, it works on Bayesian statistics and there's a lot of, uh, it's very deep, our algo. And luckily he also, our data scientist, um, luckily he's working for equity and he knows a lot about AI and machine learning. So uh, we kind of have it, we know what we want to do with it. We kind of, uh, we've gone through it. We know the places we would add it. It's just, uh, you know, it's just, we just don't have the resources at the moment to go through with it, but our program is perfect for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. Um, and in, in terms of, um, uh, and then there's one thing I don't know if you mentioned there, during um, in your uh, description of what Better Takes does is like the ability to uh, link to your uh, sportsbooks account so you can ingest that data as well. Yeah, so Better Takes works best the more data it has. It works on statistical significance. For example, <clears throat> um, you know, the, st the, your, the sample size is baked into the edge score. So if you have a fantastic record, like eight wins and one loss, I mean, that's a great record, but you're not going to have a very high edge score because the sample size is small. Now, if you had 80 wins and 10 losses, which is the same sample size, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the same win percentage, but it's proven over a larger sample size, you'll have a much higher edge score. So obviously, the more data in the program, the better. And there's a few ways to get that back data in there. The best way is we have something called BetSync, that if you use any of the legal sports books in the US, you can connect to those sports books through an API call and download all of your past history and boom, your history is in there. So that's the easiest way to get it in there. If that's something that, um, you know, like I personally don't live in a state where betting is legal, um, worst comes to worst, and we, we also will let you upload a spreadsheet. We also have a format for a spreadsheet if you have, I think Bovada lets, gives you a spreadsheet. So if you can get your bets in a spreadsheet, we can upload them. You can also do it manually. You can also do it one at a time. It's a hassle, but it's not that big of a deal. And worst comes to worst, if you have to start from scratch, it's not really that big of a deal. Within, It's still fascinating stuff. Within a week or two, you're going to have very interesting data. And before you know it, it'll be statistically significant. It's a qu quick way to get to know your, yourself as a sports better. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, there's nothing else out there that, that shows you that. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Mm. So you launched, you're on the app stores. Um, you launched recently, right? We so what's it? We can so you're, you're up and running. What's that like as a startup? What's your trajectory kind of projections? You know, you're in this mode now. Like, how do you envision people finding you first off? And then like your growth, you know, your audience growth, you know, where, oh. where you really start to see that, well, look at, we're taking off. The word of mouth is spreading or... So it, is it, it's really hit us on the head. Like we've been just focusing on development, 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 development. Right. All of a sudden it's marketing, 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 marketing. Exactly. Yeah. Like if we can go from yeah. tech to marketing, it's you know, and say thing like that. This is right where they merge. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, guys, we're live. How are people going to find us? Right. Yeah, so, exactly. So that's a great question. And we just don't have a lot of resources. We're self-funded. We've all put in money. Um, and we, we're not big believers in throwing a lot of money at problems anyway. So... We have several avenues how we're going to market this. The first thing is, um, you know, I come from old school, and to me, viral marketing means have the best product. If you have an awesome product, people tell each other about it. They tell their friends and stuff. So old school viral marketing to me is just have the best product and go for word of mouth. Mm -hmm. We also have um, a couple of organic avenues. We have two guys on our team. One of them is Eric Sheets Haber, and another is Bobby Firestone that have big names, actually huge names in the poker world and big names in the DFS world, and they have following. So they're starting to market among their their people. Right. And um, they have a site called True DFS that they're, we're marketing. We just did a video uh, half an hour ago. And we also, um, the company is a lot of my old friends, like our CTO, we've been best friends since we were 15. And his kid goes to Michigan State. And so we're going to start uh, marketing to college canvases because there's a lot of it's amazing how kids are just into betting. It's crazy. I mean, oh, I know. But I, I have them. I have betters in the house. Yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> it's like these kids are just like live betting during lectures now. Oh, it's like they're just not even, they don't care about smoking weed. They, all they do now is like kids just bet on sports. Um, right. And we actually have some cool social features as well. We have contests. We have something called bet circles. We made these fun social. Be our, our algo is also very conducive. It's for your own, you know, our program is is to find you, you know, the things inside of you, but it also works very well comparing people. It also is a great way to have contests and things. So we added some fun features, some contests and bet circles. And so we're going to, um, and because we have a kid who is kind of ensconced in the uh, betting world in Michigan State, we're going to try to grow our uh, user base organically in colleges and then maybe have a uh, program that we stamp out to different colleges. And we also want to grow through relationships and partnerships. And this is really all of my companies. I, I've grown a lot of companies 
pretty big on the t- on the on the top end and the customer end by making great partnerships and relationships. And there's a lot of companies out there that reach the same demographic that we're looking for, but they aren't in competition with us. So I would rather, you know, it's daunting to build a consumer site from scratch. I mean, like it's it's crazy actually without a lot of money. But how do people find out? So I I really want to find some partners that already reach the people we want to reach. And we can somehow leverage, you know, somehow offer them something in exchange for leveraging their marketing reach and have people hear of us through them. But it's hard. It's hard to uh, hopefully interviews like this, press, but we're not, you know, we're not going to, you can't advertise on Google. This isn't something that we can, you know, we're not going to throw a lot of money at marketing. You can't even really throw a lot of marketing in the, in the sports industry. Um, a lot of, you know, you get shit out of a lot of um, avenues, but we're just going to try organically just, you know, um, bite and scratch and join these uh, Discord rooms and chat rooms and Reddit rooms. And we're just going to see if we can just whatever niche we can carve out just by being the scrap B underdog starter. You know, you see, you hit on that the uh, social <clears throat> aspect of this. You know, it's, I was thinking, it's just thinking of Spotify when they launched. You know, it was really a social music app, right? You know, you were sharing your playlist. Is this on your tech roadmap where you will be able to? share your six your your edge score with others and compare we is that something so that's something we're going to build out more and more and more the social measures well right. we do have that already we have this super cool feature we have this feature called bet circles we're friends on okay that's what you're talking about yeah and one part of this one really cool thing we have is that if anyone in your group puts a bet in you know that has a high edge score it shows up for everyone so it's a way that you can leverage everyone's strengths. So, you know, if someone has like a 58 edge score, 61 edge score, everyone in the group can see it. And um, so, like you said, it's kind of a way that you can share your resources and share your strengths. Right. But our roadmap does have, we have some incredibly cool and advanced features. We also have some super cool so- social features coming up. Interesting. And of course, the social features are viral. They right? People invite each other, you know, to be right. event circles. Right. Then that's how, how you get... Adapters, exactly. people play around with it. Yeah, I kind of think you know, it's also, uh, at least from you know what we've heard, Kevin and I, you know, speaking to a lot of folks in the industry, to have uh, you know content besides like what your main product is, right, to keep people engaged. Uh, so you know, you, you see that in some of the sports books apps now, um, or a little more now than before, and that's only going to progress. Um, you'll see a lot more content, um, you know, in the DraftKings and FanDuel's and Caesars. Uh, I think that they're assigning more uh, TV deals or live streaming uh, events. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's always good to have like that, you know, uh, uh, other features to keep folks on the app. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking too about your your roadmap. <clears throat> yeah, you know, we work with a lot of startups and. We work with FanDuel and some of the big players. And what we've also seen is some of the startups that have their platform and then are off building a white label type solution. You know, do you envision that, you know, working with some of the big the big players? You know, there's only a handful now, you know, the big players in the industry where you would, this could be a white label that would. Absolutely. And we're actually talking to a couple sites for such B2B relationships. Um, Interesting. And I'd love to do that. I mean, I don't care. I mean, you know, basically we have this product. There's people out there that would find it very valuable. I don't really care how how that connection is made. If it's through white labeling through another site, if it's through a partnership, I really, you know, I, partnerships would, um, whatever kind, relationships, that's always been my main way to grow. So white labeling, you know, someone like the Action Network would be a, a perfect customer right. because yep. they have kind of a very weak bet tracker. They just kind of have this like, you know, kind of afterthought kind of things like that. And we could really beef it up for them and offer a lot of value to their customers. So, I mean, our, our product offers an incredible amount of value to the customers. It's something that they can, some of them are going to win more money with immediately. And if, and there's nothing else like it. So, yeah, we would love to do white labeling and other kind of B2B relationships, however they work out, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, when we first spoke um, yesterday, <laughs> well, what in this relationship? <laughs> when, well, yeah. Granted. Yeah, feels like I've known it for years. Um, yeah. But but what, what yeah when you started talking about you know uh, your app, the, the first thought that came into my mind was the Action Network, 
and started thinking like, do they have, you know, what you do? And that that's, I, I don't know. I haven't come across it, but they do have that content, right? That, that draws people in and, and they do have, um, a pretty seamless, uh, I would say experience moving to your sports book, right? Um, you know, from, from their app. Um, but, but what they are missing is what happens before I want to move to that sports book to put, you know, to put in the proper wager. And that's where you come in. Yeah. And, and our app can drive an incredible amount of affiliate revenue because, you know, somebody says, Hey, I like high point plus six. We say, that's a great bet for you. But here, if you go to Caesars, it's six and a half. So it's a great call to action to get affiliate revenue by, you know, our app is telling you like, yeah, bet this thing. And here's where to bet it. Oh, you don't have an account yet? Well, here's the offer. So it really can drive revenue for someone like, or FanDuel. Like, yeah, hook us up right. with FanDuel. Call your guys at FanDuel and just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't have them. If you have DraftKings connected or do you have FanDuel in your... Well, we have we, we have FanDuel. I mean, we have FanDuel connected to download your history. Right, okay. Well, right. you know, like, you know, um, we actually, Russell and I mentioned this yesterday. Russell was bringing up that, the, you know, kind of the... The land grab of acquisition is ending and now retention. It's about retention. Yeah. As I just said, you know, to differentiate, I mean, let's face it, um, sports books, they, they really offer nothing. You know what I mean? They really don't have anything to offer except a price and, and odds. And people are going to go with the one, you know, th there's really nothing they, they offer that's proprietary except slightly better odds. So they're going to need things to differentiate themselves. They're going to need personalization. They're going to need better tools. And let's face it, the first one that grabs our tool is going to have a huge advantage because everyone's just going to stick to their site. So um, right. it's a natural. Right now, I mean, I've heard that the guy from DraftKings said, like, we don't want winners on our site. So they kind of have this opinion that, you know, they don't want winning players, but they're not going to have that luxury at some point. I mean, they, they all sell the same product. So at some point, those sports books are going to have to use outside tools like ours for the retention that they need you know, right. to, to justify their multiples, their, their valuation. And with that 18 to 24 target audience that everyone wants to bet, they are social, they're interactive. You know, it's just, you know, it's like fantasy, you know, fantasy football, all that kind of stuff. Everybody's kind of communicating now through their sports and their successes and losses. You know, I can see this being part of that conversation that keeps you engaged or keeps you on an app. And one of the things I was jotting down uh, earlier was uh, around aff affiliates. Because, uh, again, like, well, looking through your app, it seems like a perfect opportunity to, and I know it's not kind of core to what you really um, are doing there, but in terms of an affiliate model, I mean, it, it's a it's a good um, opportunity uh, to kind of participate in that industry. Maybe not fully but no, making making money is is core to our um <laughs> anyway you can actually want on objections that actually yeah it's just uh we uh they they want to i don't think we're of yeah we, we definitely want to add affiliates to our site um it's just a little early like uh we we probably won't get approved yet now that we're in the app store we can we're gonna we're gonna we, we kind of started that process before we were live and they were like no you got to be live first so now don't revisit that but we'll, we'll add the affiliates to our site yeah yeah and it, it looks like a yeah um great and uh yeah i mean what how we usually kind of finish off these interviews is we ask everybody what do you see happening in, in the market over the next 12 months 24 months as far in the future as you'd like to go you know where do you see the future of uh sports betting as a whole and if you have a perspective on companies like yourself that are uh, kind of work, work, work on the um, uh, who are in the sports betting ecosystem, but are not sports books. I don't have a great industry outlook like that. I'm not so tapped into the industry. I mean, I can just say the things that are obvious that the sports books, the operators are going to move into the world of personalization. The land grabs are over. Obviously, the industry has built in growth because of the. Um, I'm kind of negative on the American economy right now. I think things aren't going to might not be so well. And I think this is going to be one of the bright spots because, you know, with, with more states legalizing all the time, there's kind of this built-in increase in audience. Um, and uh, so I think it's it's a great industry to be in at the moment. 
And I think that um, I think the sports books are kind of played out. I don't think I, re I, I I'm really interested in this peer to peer betting. I think that um, anything that uh, reduces the commissions on sports books, I, I actually think this is where I think the industry is going. I think commissions, the bigger is just too high. And there's just um, I think that 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 is going to have to drop. And these peer to peer sites that that, you know, hook up two people and have an escrow and, uh, you know, off, you know, with almost no commission, I think really could take off. And I think the sports books are in trouble. I think there's too many of them. They're all selling the same thing. And it reminds me of, you know, all the hard drive companies 30 years ago. There was like Western Digital and all these hard drives that were, you know, there were 20 hard drive companies that were going to have 30% market share. And I feel like that's what's coming in now. I feel like a lot of these guys aren't going to make it. A lot of them are going to drop off. There's going to be consolidation. They're going to have to lower their rates to attract people because at the end of the day, that's really all they offer is, is prices. And um, I'm just, I'm not bullish on the sports books. I think the sports books are just going to be um, killing each other off and, and trying to find new ways. And I think they're being too, they're just, they're being too um, proprietary right now. And I think they need to, to open up a little bit and try different things. And uh, I just think the land grab for people is, is ending. And now they have to try something a little more, they have to be a little more daring. They're going to have to offer other services. They're going to have to offer more personalization. They're going to have to cut their rates. And uh, there's just not enough business for, for them all to succeed like this. There's, there's going to be some changes there, some con consolidation and some changes. Yep. And I think the informational side, my side, is going to be good too. I think that as more and more people become more informed and more professional type betters, there's going to be the informational side, you know, right now it's like 99.9% .9 operators, but I think the informational side is going to grow and grow and grow. And um, I think that there's going to be a lot of, I think the little sports are going to, I think the WNBA, I think women's sports actually are going to have more of a future as people look, as they're not so played out and people look for edges. So I think that the main sports are going to get a little played out. Smaller sports are going to, are going to grow. And I think things like peer-to-peer -peer betting are going to really, um, are, are going to, be like the next phase yeah and uh the peer-to-peer -peer, you know interesting point kevin you know everybody we've asked previously no one has brought it up yeah you're the first uh, person yeah but it makes yeah. sense especially in, yeah. in where you're going with this as well what were we just talking about you know, tra traditionally it's not existent in, in the u.s traditionally meaning the last four plus years but it's very big overseas right it, it's uh, tremendous in in europe um and uh, I think they started to allow peer-to-peer -peer betting um, in New Jersey, Kevin. I saw some article. There's one company in Jersey called Profit. Yeah. 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 I've seen the ads. There's there's ads here already. And I see no reason for them not to take over. Like, what? Yeah. What? You know. And they're doing well. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. you know. But that's, you know, that's the way this whole business is going. Whatever happened overseas, then Jersey takes the first shot, right? Like. And then we'll see what, where it goes yeah. as it rolls state to state. Well, this has been great, Russell. This is a good chat. And yeah. I, the, I, we look forward to staying in touch, you know, especially as you are on a technology road and advancing and new adaptions. And hopefully we can be with you, you know, for your ride yeah. and have you back when you're at wait, when you're at the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. It was really good to meet you guys, too. Well, I will definitely stay in touch and let you know how we, uh, as we grow up, we take our first step. As we say our first words, I'll keep you guys home. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. and, and the partnerships, you know, the, there's there's opportunities down the road, which will be exciting, which hopefully we can partner. Yeah, yeah. right. Do you guys have any clients that would be a good fit? Yeah. We, we're, we're very generous to shares. So let us Great. know. Let us know. Great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.